Entry to medical specialty training is getting more competitive every year. In psychiatry, the competition ratio has gone from 2.99 in 2021 to 9.45 to 1 in 2024. Hi guys, I'm Tria and I'm a junior doctor working in London. I applied for psychiatry core training. Today I'm going to be talking about how I scored highly in the MSRA, which is the exam used to enter specialty training. Okay, let's start by talking about what exactly is the MSRA. So the MSRA stands for the Multiple Specialty Recruitment Assessment and it's a computer-based exam that is used by many specialties as part of their core training application. For those of you who don't know the UK system, core training is the beginning of your journey into specialty training, which you begin after you've graduated medical school and you've completed two years of the foundation program. And once you complete specialty training, this leads you to be a specialist in your field, such as a consultant or a GP. The MSRA is an exam which is used by many specialties, including GP, psychiatry, radiology, and even surgery now. And the way that each special uses this exam is different. For some specialties, it is the only thing that is used to allocate you to a job. And in other specialties, your score in the MSRA is used to invite you to interview. At the moment, the specialties of psychiatry and GP use the MSRA 100% in order to give doctors jobs. Whereas, for example, in anaesthetics, the MSRA counts for less. In anaesthetics, the MSRA is used to rank candidates to invite them to interview. And then once you get to the interview stage, your interview performance is 85% of your score and your MSRA score is 15%. So once you've decided on a specialty to go down, make sure that you check exactly how the MSRA is used for your specialty. And just remember that the specifications change very often for different specialties. So keep an eye on the website. In terms of the exam itself, it's a computer exam and it's 170 minutes without extra time. There are two parts of the exam, the clinical problem solving paper and the professional dilemmas paper. The clinical paper is similar to medical school finals where it tests your clinical knowledge and the professional dilemmas paper is more about ethical scenarios and what would a junior doctor do and it's similar to the situational judgment test or SJT which UK medical students had to do before graduating. If you want to stay in your preferred location especially if it's somewhere competitive then the MSRE is very important. Even the difference of a few points in your exam can sometimes push you hundreds of ranks down in the national ranking. Okay, so let's talk about my stats and also why the MSRA matters. So my score for the MSRA, which I took in February of 2025, so just a couple of months ago, was 582. They gave you a very small breakdown of your scores. In the professional dilemma section, I got 278, which according to this graph is in the top 4% of candidates who take the exam. And in the clinical paper, I got 304, which is in the top 3%. So I did slightly better in the clinical than in the professional dilemmas paper, but this is something I was expecting because I revised a lot more for the clinical paper. But I'll talk about that more later. The system that the specialty training programs use in the UK for people to apply to jobs is called Oriel. And in that website, they show you your rank, your national rank, based on all the people who took the MSRA and applied to your specialty. So for me, this was psychiatry, and it said that my rank was 206 out of 7,845. So what this means is that 7,845 people scored high enough in the MSRA in order to be deemed appointable for a post in psychiatry. And out of those people, my rank was 206. I think this is not bad. I was pretty happy with that ranking, but I still wasn't sure whether that would be enough to get me a job at all or a job in the place which I wanted, which was in London. With this rank of 206 and my score, I initially got a job in my second choice location, which was Oxford. And I was pretty happy to go there because I had studied medicine in Oxford, so it would be like going back to where I had been already for six years. And there was pros and cons. However, I really wanted to stay in London. But then Oriel has this system where once you get given an offer, there's an option that you may be upgraded, which means that someone who has a higher rank than you has given up their job and you get their spot, essentially. In the first round of upgrades, I was upgraded to my top location and a job that I really wanted. And I was quite surprised actually, because I thought 206 was a pretty good rank, but as you can see, competition is fierce. When I was revising, and I'll talk more about exactly what I did, but I was sort of expecting the exam to be easier than it was. When I was preparing for this MSRA, I was preparing for an exam which I thought would be a lot easier than the Oxford finals. And what I did was I slightly over-prepared for the level of difficulty that I thought it would be. But actually, when I turned up at the exam and I saw the questions, I realized that the level that I had prepared for 
was actually the right level. So I was revising expecting to be over prepared, but I was just right, which was good, which was I'm really grateful for because I think I would have tanked the exam had I not revised enough. But it was surprising because I'm usually the sort of person who feels like they worked too hard for an exam. And I'm usually the sort of person who thinks that they probably could have had a bit more of a life instead of revising the whole time. But actually this time, the level that I had prepared was just right and just enough to get me through. So let's talk about planning a realistic revision timetable. So this is really based on how much time you have what type of job you're working, if you're working at all, and what type of person you are. I've always been the type of person who prefers to revise slow and steady over a long period of time, rather than cramming everything at the last minute. For this exam, which I took in February of 2025, I started revising in October of 2024. But at the time, I expected to be taking my exam in January of 2025. So I started in October, giving myself just over three months to prepare. However, then once I'd applied, I got an email saying that because of a high demand, the candidates who are applying for psychiatry will be sitting the SJT in the second session, which is in February rather than January. So this meant that I got an extra month that I wasn't expecting. So in total, I revised for four months from October of last year to February of this year. And I wasn't cramming. I was just revising one or two hours a day at the beginning and then ramping this up. But bear in mind that I wasn't working full time at this point. I have finished my foundation years last year and I'm taking an FY3 year where I am working locums and traveling. So I had a lot more time on my hands to revise. I was really fortunate that I didn't have to work full time, mainly because I live at home with my parents and I save a lot of money that way. Had I been working full time, I probably would have started revising earlier and then taken things slow rather than having to cram everything in at the end. The way I have always done things is that I like to track my revision based on how many hours I've spent revising. So I have all the stats, how much I revise, and I'm gonna talk about them now. And I revised in bursts of an hour, Basically, I use this technique called the Pomodoro technique, which is where you're supposed to concentrate for 25 minutes and then have a break for five minutes and then so on. So that makes an hour. But what I did is I slightly modified that so that I worked for 30 minutes and then took a 10 minute break and then 30 minutes and a 10 minute break. So in October, which is about four or five months of the exam, I revised in total 34 hours, which averages to about an hour a day of revision. So as you can see, it's very doable and a very slow start. Then in November, I revised for 52 hours, which is on average about an hour and 40 minutes a day. So slowly getting a bit more. In December, I actually only revised for 11 hours in the whole month because I went to California on holiday and then I went on a family holiday to Scotland and then it was Christmas. So I really didn't do much revision, but this was okay because I had planned for this. And because I'd revised quite well in the last two months, I was able to take this time off without it really affecting my performance too much. I then really ramped things up in the new year. So in January, I revised for 72 hours, which, uh, which averages 2.5 hours a day. And in February, I sat the exam on the 18th. So in the 17 days before that, I revised for 64 hours in total, which is about three hours and 45 minutes a day before the exam. I would say this was a slow and consistent effort, which was quite good because it meant that I was never chained to my desk the whole day. And I think it's very doable. So here are my key points for planning revision. The first one is give yourself more time than you think you need especially if you're working full time or you've got a very busy life. The next tip is to use your captive time. And by this, I mean use time that you would otherwise be wasting. For example, when I would go to work and do locum shifts, I would use the time that I would usually spend watching Netflix on the train. And instead I would do question bank questions. And my commute was over an hour each way. So that would give me quite a lot of time. And that way the hours would really rack up. If you're lucky at work and you have some downtime or you have time at lunch, then do a couple of questions then. I would say the most important thing is getting used to questions and just keeping on doing questions. So if you can fit them in when you're on the train or waiting for someone, then yeah, definitely do it. And a definitely tip I've learned the hard way over years and years of revising for many exams in school and then in medical school is just be really realistic about how much you can do. Like, as you can see that when I started, I only did an hour a day, but then I don't think I could have done more consistently over weeks and months because I would have burnt out. In the next video, I'm going to talk about exactly what resources I used. So what question banks I liked and what question banks I didn't like. Then I'm going to talk about exactly how I revised, what worked, what didn't, and what I wish I'd done differently. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe. If you are planning to do the MSRA or you've already done the MSRA, please comment and let me know. Thank you so much much for watching.